Bailey and Dave. Yep. Dave, how's it going? Thank you, Dave. Thank you for coming out to see us today. Good to see you. Good to see, see you. you again. We're meeting with Dave Rosenfeld, who is a Utah ufologist, and he's had a lot of very unique experiences. It's going to be worth it to see exactly where Dave witnessed these unique events and to hear the stories behind them. We're at the Dugway Proving Grounds, and right down here is Michael Air Airfield. This whole area is the military airfield. We are about right here, and we need to go right about here. Now the only way to get there is really on ATV. You're not going to be driving a car down here because the train's pretty rough. So you brought some ATVs for us? Yes, we did. Our ATV route takes us largely due south towards the border of the southern segment of the Utah Test and Training Range, or UTTR. Now, UTTR is administered by the Air Force, while the Army runs Dugway Proving Ground. However, both these facilities frequently collaborate and host experiments for all the military branches. See this, it's the bombing range. Right over that mountain's where we've seen the test. We were parked right about here, right where we were at. It was about one o'clock in the morning and uh, we see this, what looks like an arc welder off in the distance. This is huge flashing light. And then this beam shot out the middle of it. It looked reddish in color actually. And uh, the light off coming off the ground was white. There was a little bit of thin clouds above that, and you can see it go through the clouds. But how long did this beam last? Probably about four minutes. Wow. And then it was shut off like a light switch. How wide was the beam, would you say? If I was to compare it to something at least as wide as a car. So we're not talking about a pencil thin no, laser no, beam. No, not here. at all. That's huge for yeah. a laser. There was a slight smell of ozone in the area kind of a static electricity type of smell. Well, you think you were smelling the, the actual laser? No, or we didn't smell it before you? that, and we didn't smell it after the testing. We know that during a thunderstorm, ions in the atmosphere can be charged in such a way that they give off this kind of a scent. This is due to a partial electrical breakdown of the air by a high volume of electricity that causes this ozone smell. Now, if this beam was creating that smell, then it must be harnessing millions of watts of power. That's very interesting you say that this beam actually was penetrating a cloud because, I mean, normally light can't go through clouds. The Air Force was experimenting for years with a way to bring down satellites by firing a maser. And then through the maser, that's the tunnel that punches a hole, then there's a laser through the maser. And that's what this is, then you are watching one of the most important anti-satellite weapons we have. <laughs> 